Well, uh, welcome, uh, hello and, and welcome to Frank's School, a 47th day, second year, first video, there'll only be one. And I had said this is going to be a, a time out, a pause. I'm busy, I have been busy showing you details of my tour de Europe, and we're about, we have left Spain in the last video. We left Spain, we went through France, and we're in Switzerland, we're just about to go into one of the most beautiful places on earth, in my own opinion. Uh, but I'm going to pause. Uh, and the overalls, I should explain. I've been wearing clothes that I used to wear in public school for the last few days. But now, these are not only overalls, these are dirty overalls. I've been working. I'm, as a, I'm a farmer, I'm a carpenter, and I've been working as a carpenter. Well, why would I do that? It has to do with Spain. Uh, I really was impressed with Spain. Uh, but maybe the most lasting impression was the handwork, the craftsmanship, the excellent, excellent work that I saw in Spain. And really, it's in honor of the craftsmen who made those things uh, that I wear my <laughs> the clothing of my trade. I'm a teacher by profession. I'm a carpenter by trade. Well, uh, this is quite a varied lot here. Uh, I'm pausing because I've got some things that I want to say. First of all, kilocalories. Kilocalories as currency. Well, at the moment, here, it's hunting season. It's deer season. And it occurred to me that it would be quite a study to make of the kilocalories involved it consumed, I'll say, by an American hunter. Uh, now, calories, people are more used to calories than kilocalories. A, cal a, a thousand calories is a kilocalorie. And people worry about how many calories there are in a donut. Well, I think a, a man can work hard all day for about, four, he would burn about 4,000, 3,000 to 4,000 calories. Uh, he needs that. Well, that would be four kilocalories. Well, he gets it from his food. And you could, uh, you could measure easily the, uh, the calories in, say, a pound or a kilo, if you want, kilo, of uh, deer meat, uh, venison. That's the uh, American hunter's goal. Well, to get those calories uh, in, in a deer venison, um, there might be 50 pounds, 70 pounds, maybe, of, of, of meat, of venison, that he would get. If you would measure the kilocalories involved in getting that, you could start with the, with the manufacture of his gun. The pickup truck, these guys always seem to have the biggest, newest pickup trucks. The farmers don't. The amount of gas used to drive to this farm, or wherever, uh, in order to do the hunting and then to drive that deer to some place where the meat is processed. <laughs> the clothing, if I hadn't mentioned that already, they have special outfits, orange. Their equipment is, oh, it's, if you measured it in money, I mean, that would be a, sort of another matter. Uh, lots and lots of money. The, the, uh, deer meat, venison, has got to be some of the most expensive meat that there is, in, even in terms of money. But when you talk about kilocalories, the amount of calories they burn walking around on the mountain is insignificant compared to the kilocalories of the whole infrastructure. It's, it's a study that I'm not going to make, but it could be made. Uh, and related to that, really, I thought about the recycling of a sofa in Germany would also be a fascinating study, I think. Now that maybe is more extreme recycling. But I pick out Germany because Germany is maybe at the forefront in the world uh, of recycling and very proud of it. And, and uh, so if you would take something <clears throat> like a sofa, a couch, I sort of had the misfortune or the very unpleasant experience about a month ago to try to recycle a sofa, to take that sofa apart, and it was horrible. Uh, now, what happens uh, in Germany with sofas? I suppose they go to incinerators. 
I, I don't know. Uh, and, and I don't even mean, I'm not so interested in the manufacture here as how it is recycled. It prob the whole thing probably goes to an incinerator. It's probably ground up. It's probably then made into steam and then into electricity. I don't know. But that would be an interesting study for me. And when it comes to uh, recycling, now let, I'll jump, I'll, I'll, let me back up just a little bit. Uh, some of the construction work I did involved changing my library, reorganizing my books. And I came across this book. I had earlier spoken about this. String Too Short to be Saved. I knew I had it somewhere. And I found it. And I said before, I didn't read the whole thing. It was strangely written, I felt. But I like the name. And I spoke about that before. Well, that brings up the question of what is scrap? What, what, I, in building things that I'm around here, I'm building many things, I'm generating scrap. Stuff that you cannot use anymore. But what is scrap? Uh, I think I have Brazilian roof here because I remember clearly when I lived in Brazil that a man had taken these square, two, I want to say two liter uh, or maybe one liter uh, cans that oil, they got cooking oil in. And he'd save them. He'd cut the bottom out, he'd cut the side up, and he'd flatten them out. So he had a piece of tin about that big. And he had saved enough to actually shingle his roof, not of his house, of a shop. Now that, I thought, was extreme recycling. And when it comes to extreme recycling, Germany can't even begin to touch a place like Northeast Brazil or Jamaica or Bangladesh. Not with extreme recycling, but that, that's kind of another matter. But back to this matter of what is scrap? Is this scrap? I've used a lot of blue on plywood. Is this scrap? Uh, I didn't burn it. Well, see, I would, I would, it, would, it would be firewood before I burn it. Is this scrap? Uh, I'd rather think I can do something with this. And these pieces, I could just burn them or if you lived in town, I guess, throw them in the trash. I don't think so. I'm, I can do something with them, I believe. <clears throat> plywood. Is this scrap? Should I burn that in the beast or in the furnace? I don't think so. I'm not ready to yet. And this. I hate this stuff in a way. I couldn't get real wood. I, I'd like to think that the, the glue is starch-based, water-based. I'd like to think that. But in any case, is this scrap? I, no, I'm not ready to say so. I've kept it. Perhaps I can do something with it. <clears throat> and... Um, Oh, and I, I've been waiting to tell you about patina. Now, and it, it's related. Is this scrap? Now, this came from the neighbor's barn. And it was in the pile <clears throat> that the beast <clears throat> is slowly consuming. And the beast yesterday consumed, or the day before consumed, part of the neighbor's barn. Pieces that I could not use. But then, my producer, Shirley, made me feel guilty. She said, why would you burn that? <laughs> well, what do you do with it? Well... I took a piece of this barn board, it was pine, and I ripped it <clears throat> on the table saw. And of course when you do that, you get, it looks like brand new wood, prettier in a way. And I thought, well, you know, I can, I can do this. I've got material uh, for this out of that. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> but what I mean by patina is I have built, I tore some shelves out recently that I have, they've served me for... Forty years, I, I suppose. When I first came here, I had a few tools, virtually no money. I couldn't buy material. I tore down uh, an abandoned coal shed to a, to a one-room school, and part of, uh, that, that was a household school, and part of uh, Viola Wagner's barn, it had been Paul Wagner's barn before, it had fallen in. And that way I got material, and out of that material, oak mostly, I'll show it to you later. I had something I could work with. Now it was rough sawn. Um, a, a nightmare to a housewife, but pretty to a lot of people. And uh, I, I tore it out. I tore the material out, but I saved it. That was the material's second use, to the best of my knowledge. And I'm sure that material will be used by me again. Because um, it's good material. It just needs to go to its next use. 
But I remember when I did that, every time I sawed something, I had to hide it to get the effect uh, because it was rough sawn. And I was very careful. And it was strange because anything you did left a mark for good. You, you couldn't sand it out. If it were new material, you could sand it or cut it. And, but, but it wasn't new material. This is patina. If, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you don't know that word. But this is patina. And uh, if, you get, if you use older material, uh, yeah, I guess you need to be aware of that. All right, uh, the beast in the neighbor's barn. Well, the beast, uh, I, I, I'll film of that again. The beast now has a mouth, <clears throat> has uh, an upper lip, a lower lip, jaws, and uh, a mustache. Uh, the, the beast is this huge outdoor oven that I have down there. And it has begun to grow a long white tail. Uh, not today, but another day I'll, I'll show you this. And it continues to consume parts of the neighbor's barn that, that I can't use when I recycle the neighbor's barn. Uh, Alright, a breakthrough on drywall. I wanted to tell you about that. Normally with drywall, gypsum, when you cut it, I hope I don't cut myself here, it's very easy to cut uh, with, a, with a knife. You score it and then, and then just snap it and then you go under here and you, there, you've cut it. It's very, very easy to cut uh, and fun, but you resu the result is a very rough edge. Well, I, I was doing... I've been doing, watch one of these will probably fall on me. I have begun to do the ceiling out of scrap. And it's working fine. The breakthrough, though, is that I've realized you can run drywall across a table saw. And I, I'd never heard of it before, but I thought, you know, why not? That's so rough. And I, I, I laughed when I first did it because it was so funny. Sure, there was, whew, there was a puff of, of dust, but it's dust that's water-soluble and doesn't hurt you. And the result was an edge that looked like, I don't know if you can see the difference. Uh, and I thought, oh my gosh. In other words, no piece of drywall that your fingers can get on is really too small now to be used for something like that. I even went to the uh, hardware store and told the man about this. He understood what I meant. And I said, well, what about what about that dust? What, what's going to keep, that? like here, stuff falls off that. You don't want that. Is there any way? And he said, well, paint. Just so I've got paint that somebody, white, eggshell, that, that somebody didn't want. Wrong color, so I got it at half price or less. He said, just take a paintbrush and just run a, just run a, a strip of paint on that. And it'll be, it'll be the same as that. So anyway, I thought I should share that. That, that. I think it's kind of funny. All right, and then finally, uh, you know, this is tomorrow. We're going to go back to this one of the most beautiful places on earth. But while I'm at it, I thought <clears throat> I should tell you that when I'm finished with the details of Frank's tour of Europe, which will take maybe two more weeks, maybe, ooh, then I'm going to go to punctuation, and I'm going to teach all the average person ever needs to know about punctuating uh, the English language. And that won't take too long, but that's one of the things that's coming up. All right, I've talked about a lot of different subjects today. Uh, if you recall, I left the transition, <clears throat> and tomorrow I'll use that transition, and we're going to go back to uh, Lausanne, Switzerland, uh, tomorrow or the next time. So see you then.